it, God. Hallelujah. Amen. I feel the presence of the Lord in this house tonight. As we were singing, He is Holy, I began to think about all of the angels. Hallelujah. That are crying, Holy, Holy, Holy. Oh, if we really, really, really understood exactly what was going on and what's going on in this place right now in that realm that your eyes cannot see. Oh, praise God. I believe that there are angels in our midst right now. And I believe that the great King of glory is in this house and in this place and that His train fills the temple. And He is high and lifted up. Oh, praise God. Why don't we praise Him one more time? Come on, lift up your eyes unto the King of glory. I praise you, Lord. I praise you, Lord. I praise you, Lord. I praise you, Lord. Hallelujah. You're the one that gives us life. You're the one that gives us strength. We are not here by accident. We come to praise you. We are here with a purpose to praise you. Oh, praise God, praise God, praise God. Hallelujah. So good to have each and every one of you tonight. Thank you. If you are a visitor, thank you for coming and being with us and worshiping the Lord here in Atascacita with this church family. Hallelujah. And we always put our hands together for our guests and visitors, but I think we ought to put our hands together for one another. Thank you for being here, this church family. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. I want to ask the ushers if they'll come. We'll give you an opportunity to give unto the Lord. And after we pray the blessing upon this offering, bring your offering, your tithes, but move around. Move around, find somebody different that you normally don't shake hands with and get over to them. I don't want anybody to get comfortable sitting in one spot. Hallelujah. And expect everybody to come to you. Amen. Let's go to one another. Hallelujah. God, we love you and we praise you. We thank you for the opportunity to give. Lord, bless this offering. Bless the tithe. Bless the giving to the purpose of the kingdom of God. Build your church. We pray it in Jesus' name. And everybody say in Jesus' name. God bless you. Move around. Shake hands.
Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Put your hands together and help us out. Yeah, for real. 
Jesus from the dead. That same spirit that entered unto those people that were in that upper room on the day of Pentecost, that same spirit is here right now. It's inside of you. It's inside of me. When you read the book of Acts, at the end of the book of Acts, there's no amen. There's no the end. There's no glory be unto God. When you read those other books following that, they are the epistles, and you will find that they have an end. There's a glory be unto God. There's an amen. But in the book of Acts, there is no ending. And that's because it is to be continued. Hallelujah. Come on. Hallelujah. Oh, come on. We're not a bunch of weak people in the generation today where they're losing their mind out there and sin seems like it's driving people crazy hallelujah we are here with a purpose hallelujah we've got that same spirit we've got that same anointing we've got that same power we've got that same zeal we've got that same excitement we've got that same story we've got that same testimony i've been resurrected from the dead i've been awakened i've been brought out of the tomb i am a modern day lazarus I have come out of the tomb. I, I am no longer who I used to be. I'm not dead in sin like I used to be. But I'm set free by the resurrection power of the Holy Ghost. That same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead is inside of me. The same spirit.
your voice. Lift up your praise unto God. Whatever you do, don't let that spirit leave. Hallelujah. We can't afford to put Ichabod on our door. The glory of the Lord has got to be in the house. That same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead, it is here right now night how many believe that you are a vessel and a temple of the Holy Ghost come on greater is he that is in me than he that is in this world praise God praise God so good to have our evangelist with us one more time Amen. Brother Zapoli is no stranger to us, no stranger here. A great man of God that I've grown to love and appreciate very much. And we're going to turn it over to him and whatever the Lord has laid on his heart for this service tonight. That's what we want. Hallelujah. Amen. Why don't we put our hands together right now and, and just let him know how much we appreciate it. Praise God. Praise God. Praise the Lord. You can be seated. I'm just playing and see. Captivator of the searching heart This Jesus This Jesus Mender of a million shattered parts This Jesus Relentless Oh Oh This Jesus this Jesus, oh, oh, this Jesus, this Jesus. So wonderful, so beautiful, so kind and lovely, isn't he? Beyond compare, treasure rich and rare, marvelous and holy, isn't he? Giver of a grace that none could earn, this Jesus, extravagant. His promise and His word Such goodness Such faithfulness So wonderful So beautiful So kind and lovely Isn't He? Beyond compare Treasure rich and rare Marvelous and holy So wonderful, so beautiful, so kind and lovely. 
be worship and adore and you alone be glorified and praised and you alone be worship and adore and you alone be glorified and praised you God you are so good God hallelujah yes Lord
Hallelujah. Can you lift up your hands and love him back? We love you, Jesus. Yes, God, we love you. Hallelujah. Tell him. Just spend a few moments right now. Tell him how much you love him, how great he is, how wonderful he is. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, we love you. Hallelujah. Feel the love of God? Amen. Mark chapter 5. I had a couple people ask me if it was going to be a two water bottle night. But I found a third one, so. Hopefully not. No, it won't be. I can't, I can't, I don't have enough good things to say for that long. So you're okay. Probably just one. Mark chapter five. I do have CDs available in, in the foyer. Most of you probably already have them, but please buy them up for your friends and family and everybody. I've got plenty. $10 and $5 respectively. Uh, one has 10 songs, one has five songs on it. Mark chapter 5, verse 25. I want to thank you so much for the opportunity to be here, Pastor, and thank you for your love and investment in me. And what a beautiful, wonderful church. Hungry for God. Amen. And I love coming to places that are hungry. A certain woman, which had an issue of blood 12 years, had suffered many things of many physicians and had spent all that she had and was nothing better but rather grew worse when she heard of Jesus came in the press behind and touched his garment for she said if I may touch but his clothes I shall be whole and straightway the fountain of her blood was dried up and she felt in her body that she was healed of that plague and Jesus, immediately knowing in himself that virtue had gone out of him, turned him about in the press and said, Who touched my clothes? And his disciples said unto him, You see the multitude thronging you, and still you say, Who touched me? And he looked round about to see her that had done this thing. But the woman, fearing and trembling, knowing what was done, in her came and fell down before him and told him all the truth and he said unto her daughter thy faith hath made thee whole go in peace and be whole of thy plague amen I just want to ask you a question tonight are you certain are you certain can we lift up our hands one more time before we're seated God we love you we thank you for your presence we thank you for your word and as your word goes forth, God, I, I pray that it would find good ground. I pray, Lord, that, it would, that you would have your way. Your word will not return void, but you're here to do a great work in the lives of your people. Whosoever will, God, you desire to heal, to make whole. You desire to bring peace. God, you desire to deliver and set free. You desire to fill this place with your presence. And I want it in my life. I receive it, God. I need, I need a touch from you tonight. I need you, God, to touch my mind. I need you, God. I need your rest and your peace, God, that only you can give. Come on, can you tell them what you need right now? I need you, Jesus. I need your rest. I need the comforter to comfort me. Hallelujah. I want everything that you've got for me, God. I'll come with purpose tonight. I'll come with certainty tonight. In Jesus' name. Somebody say, in Jesus' name. Amen. You can be seated. She was a no-namer. Mark just said that she was a certain woman. Ironic, because obviously he was uncertain what her name was. 
Elsie would have put her name. She was nameless, but she was not powerless. She was nameless, but she was not faithless. Just a certain woman, but she was certain about what she came for. Are you certain tonight? The woman had been hemorrhaging for 12 long years. Didn't know how to stop it. No one could touch her, nor anything that she had touched. By law, she was considered unclean, so unclean that if she was married, she was to be divorced by her husband, according to the Levitical law, Leviticus 15. Imagine that. She was to be totally cut off from society and religious worship. This certain woman had tried a lot of uncertain things. She tried everything that she knew. Of course, she took many risks. She sought out many physicians and she spent all that she had and yet she grew worse. What a terrible situation to do all that you can do and instead of uh, even remaining the same, You certainly don't get better, but actually you grow worse. What an awful predicament to find yourself in. There was nowhere else to turn except to Jesus. Jesus said, Matthew 11, verse 28, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Is anybody tired in here tonight? Yeah, the enemy's been fighting you. You may not even recognize it as a spiritual attack, but the enemy's been warring. He's been speaking negative thoughts. You know, we're not the only ones who work a harvest field, but the enemy comes to sow tares in the night. And in the night, when you're not paying attention, perhaps your mind is, maybe you're asleep, and the enemy wants to come and sow those negative thoughts. I'm nothing. I I don't know how I'll ever be anything more. My family is lost. I don't know how they'll ever be saved. I I, I just feel helpless and hopeless. Is anybody weary in here tonight? Does anybody need rest? Jesus said, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. The comforter is here today. We spoke about it this morning. Jesus said, I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. But it's not just for the lost out there. It's for you. It's okay to be tired. It's okay to feel exhausted. But you got to be certain. As long as you're not uncertain, you're in a good place. Amen. Sometimes all you can do is struggle to get to the feet of Jesus. Sometimes it feels like you've got no energy, you've got no strength left inside of you, and all you can do is do what you know to do. All you can do is stay faithful. All you can do is keep on coming to church. Even when you don't feel anything, you don't see God working, and you don't understand because you know you're not living a life of sin. You know that you're being uh, dedicated, you're, you're, you're being committed, you're consecrating your life to God, but still you feel nothing. It's okay to be tired. Jesus said, come unto me. Don't forget where your source is. Don't forget where your help comes from. Don't forget the comforter. You need him. Don't suppress those feelings. Don't try and hide. Don't try and just tough through it and not show any emotion. But no, if it's okay to cry. It's okay to be tired. When everything else fails, try Jesus. Jesus is still here. He's just waiting on us to come to him. What a wonderful, merciful Savior. Most people try all else before Jesus, and yet he still loves us, and he's still here for us. He still cares for us. Jesus has been waiting on you, ma'am, even though we often turn to him as our very last resort. He is here to wrap his loving arms around you and let you know his matchless, undeniable love and strength and comfort and power. When you cannot find hope anywhere else, you can find it 
in Jesus Christ. He will never turn away. He is right here for you tonight, patiently waiting for whosoever will. If you'll reach out to him, he opens his arms to all who come to him. He will not turn you aside. He will not deny you. But if you'll just reach out, if you'll just keep coming, if you could just press through the crowd a little bit, if you could just move some other things aside and some other people and just say, hey, God, I'm here for you. I can hardly make it. Maybe I could just touch the, the, the hem of your garment. Maybe that's all I can get to. But if I can just touch you, I know I'll be okay. Is there a certainty inside of you tonight? Even when you're tired, even when you're weary, come on, do you know where your help comes from? He's your source of strength. He's your source of hope. She felt shy. She, she was embarrassed. She felt perhaps unworthy, elbowing her way through the crowd, came up behind Jesus She wanted to touch Jesus without being seen, without really a a big commotion going on. Why? Because she, she was embarrassed. Her situation was a personal, intimate matter for her, something she did not want to everybody to know, perhaps something she did not want everyone to discuss. She was considered totally unclean, just an outcast, and Jesus understands embarrassing matters, personal matters. Jesus understands secret matters. He's not here to ridicule or shame. You don't have to shout out all your problems today. He hears you when you whisper. You don't have to confess your sins to a priest today, to a man today. He wants you to know that he is right here for you. You don't have to respond like everybody else. You can respond to the presence of God in your own way tonight. Now, I'm not going as far as to say, uh, do what makes you comfortable. No, you can't do what makes you comfortable. Because that's not going to get you anywhere. You will need to step outside of your comfort zone tonight if you want to get his attention. Even if you have to crawl your way to Jesus, come on, you can get his attention if you move from your place of comfort. Amen. You just, you just don't have to do it the way others are doing it. There are personal, embarrassing matters that, that sometimes we wish to keep secret, but the Lord is nigh unto them that are of a broken heart and saveth such which be of a contrite spirit. Psalm 34, 18 said, the sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and a contrite heart, O oh God. Thou wilt not despise. Amen. He's not here to call you out or shame you, but God does want you to be honest with him tonight. She had an expectant attitude. She believed, this certain woman believed that what she had heard of Jesus Christ, it could happen to her. She believed that Jesus loved and cared and he could make her whole. She said to herself, if I may touch but his clothes, I shall be whole. Sometimes you got to talk to yourself. Sometimes you got to look in the mirror and say, stop all that negative talk. Stop all that negative thinking. Sometimes you, gotta, you just got to you gotta look in the, in the mirror and say, you know what? No, I'm a child of God. God loves me. God is for me. God is not against me. Hallelujah. I feel weariness tonight. I, can, I, I know what I'm talking about because I feel weary. I know the enemy's uh, uh, he's on the rampage. He's trying to attack the people of God. But I, I want to tell you that his rest, his peace is here. And I want you to, to start saying to yourself, if I could just but touch him, I shall be made whole. If I could just but reach him. Come on, I'm in his presence, but that's not good enough. I got to reach out to him and make sure I touch him. She said to herself, amen, it matters what you think. It matters what you say. It matters the thoughts you entertain. It matters. She believed the power of Jesus could make her whole. I wonder if you could just talk to yourself tonight. I wonder if you could just whisper some things to yourself, if I could just touch him. Uh, come on, can you just talk to yourself for a minute. Come on, encourage yourself in the Lord like David did for a little bit. Just encourage yourself. Say, God, you're for me. You're not against me. Hallelujah. I know I've been feeling attacked. I know I've been fighting this uphill battle, but God, I know if God is for me, who can be against me? Amen. The Lord 
is here for us tonight. The same expectant, believing attitude is necessary for all of us when we come to Christ, that we must believe what we have heard about him. This lady heard of him, and immediately she believed and left her house and went to find him. And, and we must believe that the power of Jesus is, is not just something we hear that he does for other people, but we must believe, you know what, if he did it for them, he can do it for me too. Hallelujah. I know it's kind of easy sometimes to have faith for somebody else. You can believe the miracle for the people up here this morning that were seeking the Holy Ghost. So we had a church that was praying for other people. Your faith can rise to a level so high for other people, but sometimes you can't have faith for yourself. I'm here to tell you it's time to believe in the power of God to heal your body, ma'am. It's time to believe in the power of God to heal your mind, sir. It's time to believe in the power of God to set you free from every addiction, from every bondage. Right? Come on now. You ain't living under some depression. You ain't living under some cloud. God has got you. And Jesus turned. He stopped everything and turned around. All these people in the crowd rubbing shoulders with him and he can never get away from the crowd and so many people there. How could he feel that certain touch? It was her faith that touched him. It's your faith that's going to touch him tonight. Faith will never go unnoticed or ignored by Jesus Christ. When you place your faith in him, that is what touches him. That is what moves him. And when you touch him, he cannot help himself. He's got to stop what he's doing and turn around. I wonder if anybody wants to just stop him and turn around. God, don't pass me by now. Look, look unto me, God. I need you right now. Is there anybody with a desperation inside of you said, you know what? Stop what you're doing. I know you're on your way to heal Jairus' daughter. I know there's a sick girl who's almost dead, God, but I need you to stop right now and turn around. God wants to do it. If you'll reach out and touch him in faith, come on. Hallelujah. His power and life will flow through you tonight when you make up in your mind, when you're certain about it. Come on. God's looking for certainty. You may be a no-namer. You may feel like you're nothing, but, God, but if you come with a certain purpose and with a certain expectation that whatever it takes, I'm going to touch him. Come on, the book does not say when you seek me with all of your heart, you're going to come up empty. That ain't what the scripture said. But Jeremiah 29, 13 said, you shall seek me and find me when you search for me with all of your heart. Come on, somebody. Is there a longing inside of you that wants to get to where Jesus is? And you'll stop at nothing. Even in your tired, weary body, you want to get to where Jesus is. If I can just touch him. Ma'am, you better be a certain woman tonight uh, when you approach him, sir. You better be a certain man uh, when you come into his presence. Uh, you better have a certain resolve and determination about you. I'm okay if nobody knows my name. I don't need accolades. I don't need to be in the spotlight. In fact, I don't want to be, uh, but I'm not okay with Jesus thinking I came haphazardly. I, I come with a certain purpose. I'm not uncertain about what I came in the presence of God for. Come on, somebody. I'm starting up in my spirit. Even though I'm going through the valley, I'm telling you, I come with certainty in my heart. It don't matter what I'm going through. God, you never change. It don't matter if they're through the good times and the bad times, God, you're constant. You remain the same. And I come with certainty inside of me. Hallelujah. Come on, lift up your hands to God right now. Tell him I'm a certain man. Come on, tell him I'm a certain woman. I know what I came for. I know what I come for. Hallelujah. I am not here for the same reason as perhaps the rest of the crowd is. But I'm making up my mind. I'm here for one reason and one reason only. I'm going to touch him. I'm going to touch him. I'm going to touch him. Stop praying for God to come touch you. Come on, stop that. Stop waiting on God to show up in your life. He's not coming to your house. He's not knocking on your door. Come on. He will even pass you right on by through the crowd. Amen. Stop getting offended if you showed up and Jesus doesn't come shake your hand. Stop with that stuff. We do that to one another sometimes. I can't believe pastor didn't come shake my hand. Stop with that. It's a two-way street. You go to pastor and shake his hand. 
Stop coming in the presence of Jesus expecting him to do for you without you wanting to reach out and stretch forth and come on, stretch a little bit for the miraculous and just reach for it a little bit. Come on, Jesus wants to know you want it. Oh, I I believe I'm preaching to some certain people tonight. Maybe it's just one person uh, that's certain what you came for tonight. But if he's important to you, you'll start calling him. You'll stop waiting on him to speak a word to you. You'll stop complaining, I can't hear from God. You'll stop all of that. And you'll actually show up and you'll speak sweet nothings in his ear. God, I'm not here to ask you for anything. I'm just here to tell you I love you. I'm not here for anything more, but just say thank you for your mercy. Thank you for you put breath in my body for another day. Thank you you gave me strength, God. Thank you I'm clothed in my right mind. I'm not a loony. I'm not somewhere on the side of the road or in the tombs or in the caves cutting myself and crying with and crying out. No, no, no. Thank you, God, that you put me in my right mind and I, that, that I have joy unspeakable and full of God. Come on, I'm not asking for anything. I'm just here to touch you, God. Oh, God. Hey, Lord, I just showed up to touch you tonight. Uh, I'm not getting this thing twisted. I know that if I touch you, my life is going to be all right. And Jesus, immediately knowing in himself that virtue had gone out of him, turned him about in the press and said, who touched my clothes? He cares for everyone. No matter how rejected you feel, no matter how cut off you feel, no matter how ostracized you may feel, you might feel unclean, dirty, polluted, contaminated, lost, but you are precious in the sight of God. And he's been waiting on you to just touch him with your faith. For we have not a high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. There it is. There's the key right there. Let's approach the throne of God. Let's approach him and he will pour out his mercy and his grace. Stop asking him to come to you, but you make it in your mind. I'm coming to you, God, with everything inside of me. I'm not going to stop short. This uncertain woman He called her daughter, no longer just an outcast of society, no longer ostracized, but the King of kings and the Lord of lords, the everlasting Father, looked at her and said, daughter, she was adopted into the family as many as received him, John 1, 12 said, to them he gave power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. This lady had a faith inside of her, such a, such a resolve inside of her, that I'm going to do whatever it takes if I can just touch him. You've been waiting on God to touch you. I wonder... If you'll make up your mind, I'm going to touch him. Matthew 15. Another lady. We don't know her name. She came out of the coast at at verse 22. She came to Jesus. She cried for help. My daughter is grievously vexed with the devil. Jesus didn't answer her. Just ignored her. Sometimes we feel like we're ignored. Sometimes we feel like we can't break through. Sometimes it feels like God can't hear us. He's not listening to our prayers. Sometimes it's just a test of faith. Are you going to be consistent? He's just looking for faithfulness, for consistency. I'm still here, God. I'm still here. I may not have any strength. I may be tired, but I'm still here. I'm not going anywhere. And this is his disciples said, would you just send her away? She keeps crying after us, but... Jesus finally spoke up. He said, I'm not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Can you pull that up, brother? I'm sorry. I know I didn't give you those scriptures. If you can, if not, that's okay. Matthew 15, 22 through 28. He said, I'm not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. 
So first he ignored her, then he denied her, told her no. She's not even coming for herself. She's coming for somebody else. She's not coming for her needs. She's asking for a helpless daughter who's at home, who's vexed by a devil. Couldn't you do that? Couldn't you just help my poor little daughter out? And Jesus said, no, I'm not sent but unto my own people. Verse 25. Then she came and worshiped him, saying, Lord, help me. When he ignores me, when he denies me, when I can't break through, am I still willing to worship? Here's a lady that said, I'm not going anywhere. I can't. I can't go back home. If I go back home, I face with the same situation. You're the only one who can do something for me. Even though I feel ignored and and I feel denied. Come on, am I willing to worship him? Lord, help me. I'm not going anywhere. I'm going to remain consistent. Jesus said, it's not me. It's not suitable to take the children's bread and cast it to the dogs. And this lady, he called her a dog. Maybe you feel like God's not claiming you. Maybe you feel like Maybe you don't feel like a daughter, a son. But this lady had such a faith. She said, you know what? That's true. But even the dogs eat of the crumbs which fall from their master's table. And I've never heard this, this said right. I, in all my years growing up in the church, I've never heard this message. It's always... Even the dogs eat the crumbs which fall from the master's table. But that's not what she said. She said, their master's table. Here's a lady. She's an outcast. You're not part of my people. I only give bread to the children. And here's a lady that said, you know what? Even if you don't claim me, I'm claiming you. I'm claiming you. Do you have that kind of faith, that kind of resolve? When you feel pushed out, when you feel rejected, you're going to remain consistent. Come on, not just any old table. Their master's table. She owned him. You don't own me? Okay, that's cool. I'm owning you. I'm not just some stray dog out there. I'm not just that dog that's looking at every front porch, looking, some, is somebody going to put out some food for me? Somebody going to give me some water? But if you crack that door open just a little, and he did, He did. He cracked it open just a little, entertaining her, even entertaining a conversation with her. He finally, she finally got him to speak to her and cracked that door open just a little bit. And here's that stray dog that's going to come running into that house and sit under that table. She claimed ownership. I'll be your dog, whether you want me or not. Are you willing? Are you, do you have that kind of faith tonight? I said, I'm claiming you, God. Come on, what, is it, what, is it, what does his dog do? I'll, I got to obey instructions. I just got to do what he tells me. If he tells me to go sit in the corner and suck my thumb, then that's what I'm going to do. Whatever he tells me to do, I'm going to do it. Do you have that kind of resolve? Whatever he tells me to do, I'm going to do it. I'm just here. I'm just waiting, patiently waiting. If you got a few crumbs, that's cool. That's all I need. I don't need the whole piece of bread. Come on, I just need a few crumbs. That's all. That's all. That'll do for me. Amen. If you, if you don't feel claimed today, if you feel ignored, if you feel rejected, if you feel tired, if you will make up your mind, I am going to touch him. I am going to claim him. I'm telling you, he's going to turn around. He's going to stop everything. And he's going to touch you. If you can believe, Jesus said, Mark 9, 23, all things are possible to him that believes. And Jesus allowed this lady with the issue of blood, 12 long years, he allowed her to be healed without, without her being embarrassed. She felt in her body the fountain of blood dry up. Nobody knew. Jesus allowed her to be healed. But it was not enough for her to get her healing and believe in him 
in secret. It wasn't enough. She had to be brought to the point of confessing her faith in God. This healing had cost Jesus. Spiritual virtue had flowed out from him into this certain woman. Jesus felt that power leave his body. It drained him. He said, who touched my clothes? The disciples were totally unaware of what Jesus was talking about. They were insensitive to that spiritual energy that flowed out of him. They were ignorant of what Jesus was doing. He took on our infirmities. He bore our sickness, Isaiah 53, 4 said. Amen. He was teaching in that moment that you can't just get a healing for free now. Come on, there's got to be a public confession of him. It's essential. The disciples were surprised by his question, who touched me? But Jesus had to turn around and find out, I want to know who's got faith in me. She came to Jesus fearing and trembling, knowing that she was not allowed to touch him. She had approached him as an unclean woman. She did not have permission to touch him, but instead of judgment, she found mercy. Instead of being condemned to die, she found new life. Jesus wants to know you. So knowing what was done in her, Scripture said, came and fell down before him and told him all the truth. It was difficult for her. Maybe it was embarrassing for her, but despite her fear, she was certain. She was a certain woman. I know what I'm here for. And she came anyway. You can't just be healed without me knowing who you are, daughter. I want you to confess who you are to me. Don't continue hiding and and slip out the back door tonight. You may feel better after you've been touched by the presence of God tonight, but don't stop short with just feeling the power of God tonight. He wants to make you whole. You're not whole yet. He wants to fill you with his spirit. He wants to live inside of you. That way you can take him with you everywhere you go. You're not just in his presence showing up to where he is, but you can literally take him everywhere that you go. Amen. You don't have to wait for just the next church service, but if you want to be made whole... Come on, you got to have a certainty about you. You got to be a certain man. You got to be a certain woman. I know what I came to do. I didn't come to just be healed. I come to be whole. You got to stick around long enough to make yourself known to him. You've been used to running after you feel the presence of God. It feels good. And you get just enough to make you feel good. But you leave here and God has not dealt with you fully because you're still trying to hide. Nobody can seem to hold you down for long. But there ain't no more running in his presence. Come on, tonight God is looking for certainty. Come on, let's stop avoiding God. Not letting him deal with the hurts and the insecurities of our lives. Things that we're ashamed of things that 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 you may even have forgotten about because you buried them so deeply Uh, but come on now God wants to deal with you he doesn't want to just heal you for a moment Uh, he wants you to be whole completely amen he wants you to experience uh, joy in him contentment in him and overcoming life victorious in him that's what God has for you But we sometimes become experts at hiding ourselves among the crowd so that we can avoid hurt and so that we can avoid uh, avoid, uh, 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 being embarrassed by people yet again. But God doesn't just want you to feel his presence and his power today, ma'am. He desires to put the broken pieces of your life back together. He desires to make you whole. Colossians 2.10, and you are complete in him. If you're in him, you are complete. Amen. Which is the head of all principality and power. Acts 17, 28. For in him, we live and move and have our being. Come on. It's all in him. You and I have cost Jesus a lot of energy. You and I uh, have cost him a lot. He's kept his eye on us all this time. He's protected us. When we should be dead and gone by now, he kept his hand upon us. He shielded us from harm and death. Oh, how great is the mercy of God. Amen. Can you thank him for his mercy right now? It cost him something. So he's not letting you off the hook that easy, ma'am. You can't get what you need for free. But he wants to know you. He wants to know you. Come on, he wants to be intimate with you. 
Oh, some of you wiping tears from your eyes. Rest assured, you have touched him. No doubt healing power is flowing through this place tonight. You've gotten God's attention tonight. The God of the universe has his eye upon you. It's fixed on you. He sees your broken heart. He knows your helpless state. You can't get away even if you tried. This is the moment that you and him have been waiting for all your life. The moment where everything changes. The moment you can finally be free. The moment you can finally feel the love of God. The moment that joy begins to spring up and well up in your soul. Oh, what a day. This right now is the moment that you can connect with Almighty God. Don't just feel His presence and walk out the door, but let Him know who you are. Tell Him your name. Tell Him what you've done. Tell Him about your faith in Him. Hallelujah. You got to be honest with him. You can't hide any longer if you want to be made whole. God desires you to be made whole. I'm talking about physically. I'm talking about mentally. I'm talking about spiritually. I'm talking about emotionally. I'm talking about every area of your life. Stop running from the presence of God. He's not here to shame you. He's here to put the broken pieces back together. Oh, I feel the presence of God. Jesus said in Luke 12, 8, Whosoever shall confess me before men, him shall the Son of Man also confess before the angels of God. But he said, if you are ashamed of me, I'll be ashamed of you. How many times do we feel his sweet presence? We take advantage of what he has to give, and then we leave, and we're not whole. Amen. He said, daughter... You're not an outcast anymore. You're part of the family because you claimed me, because you didn't wait for me to come touch you, but you came and touched me. Daughter, your faith has made you whole. Go in peace and be whole. She received the peace of God that passes all understanding. When you have the peace of God, you know you can't lose. When you have the peace of God, you, don't, you ain't worried about what you used to worry about. You don't have all those questions in your mind about what's going to happen tomorrow. When you have the peace of God, you can lay your head on the pillow at night and you can sleep. Amen. You don't, you're not tormented in your mind. God wants to, to cover you with his peace. God wants you to experience that. You've been fighting. You've been, you've been wrestling too much. Come on. You've been trying. And that means you've been trying too hard. The Lord wants to lead you by his peace. Come on. Hallelujah. That's what he has for you. Her fear and her trembling were gone now. She was flooded with the peace of God. Peace I leave with you, Jesus said. John 14, 27. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you. Not as the world gives, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Jesus made her whole, both physically and spiritually. She feared facing him because she feared being rebuked. And she was wrong. Jesus longed to heal that that desperate, certain woman. No person is too dirty for him. In fact, the more unclean you are, the more he desires to cleanse you and make you whole. Imagine what a Savior. They that behold need not a physician, but they that are sick stand with me. Go you and and learn what this means. I I will have mercy and not sacrifice. I am not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. What a hope. What a hope we have in Jesus Christ. Are you tired tonight? Do you need a Sabbath? You can find your rest in him. Would you close your eyes? Would you lift up your hands? Would you, would you start speaking out loud? God, if I could just touch you. I shall be made whole. Come on, talk to yourself tonight. If I could just touch the hem of your garment, if I could just get to your presence, if I could just make sure, God, that I'm touching you with my faith. It's my faith, God. I believe you. I believe you're everything you said you are. I believe not just for my neighbor. It's easy to believe for them, but I believe for myself. Come on, God wants you to start believing for your situation. Would you believe him tonight? 
Lift up your hands right now. Come on, that's it. Entertain his presence right now. Go ahead, cry out to him. Call out to him. Stop expecting him to come knocking on your door. Come on, you go knock on his. I'm, I'm asking you, would you take one step of faith outside of your comfort zone? I don't know what your comfort level is, I'm, but I'm asking you to move outside of it, whatever that is. And if you could just let him know, I, I may be weary in my body, but I've got a certainty about me. Maybe I'm just preaching to one person. Maybe I'm just preaching to one lady who's made up her mind. And I'm a certain woman. Maybe I'm just preaching to one man that's made up. I may be nameless, but I'm not hopeless. I may be nameless, but I'm not faithless. I may be nameless, but I'm not powerless. I may be nameless, but I've got purpose. Hallelujah. Come on, reach out to him right now. Come on, can you stretch your faith just a little bit right now? God's about to meet you right where you are. You're about to be healed in your body. Come on, you're about to be healed in your mind, but not just that. Stay a little bit. Stay a little bit longer. Linger in his presence. And when he turns, when he turns to look at you. Come on, don't hide from him anymore. Let God deal with the brokenness in your heart. Let God deal with that bitterness. Come on, he wants to pull it out. He he wants to extract that bitterness from you. He wants to take it out of you. Come on, you've been living bitter for too long. God desires to make you whole. Is there anybody that desires to be made whole? Hi, this is Pastor Kevin Martin, and I just want to thank you all for joining us today, tuning in and being a part of our service. We hope that it was a blessing to you and that you were uplifted and encouraged and felt the presence of the Lord. If you would like to know more about our church, please join us at www.atascacitaupc.com and you will find all of the ministries. You will find pictures where you could take a journey and see everything that's been going on at the Pentecostal Church of Atascacita. And uh, we hope that you join us again very soon. God bless you.